Hello, Sister Natasha. Uh, you know, I'm Jo bosa sha sema hiyo nyumba ifungwe alafu ukilipa utafunguliwa. Sawa.
And ES Fellowship, I guess, uh, will be in the evening from 2 p.m. We'll be having our ES Fellowship. Let's believe and pray for the offerings. Father, we are grateful for this hour that you have granted, O oh God. Lord, we glorify you, we honor you, my Father, for you are worthy, O oh God. Lord, we surrender ourselves, O oh God, that you may take over, Lord, even everything that we are going to give unto you. May you bless us, O oh God, and increase us in abundance, O oh my Father. Let you take over, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, trusting and believing. Yeah, and those with the hard copy, I guess our ushers are around, and they will be el uh, helping us to collect yeah, and to those with soft copy, you can go to M-Pesa menu, choose pay bill option, click on Lipana M-Pesa. Our business number is 247247. Account number is 258510-Sadaka-Tide. Thank you, media team, for projecting that to us. Yeah, and um, I'm so much grateful, and I want to as you to continue doing our devotions let's be doing the devotions and let's be praying and uh, also don't forget you are academics please attend lectures go to lectures and uh, know the the main purpose that you are here is academics so don't neglect your classes may god bless you and feel at the right place i welcome choir
Kitu gani kita nitenga na Yesu mokozi mungu This is Choir Family. We are ministering to God's people through songs. It's our delight. Our first ministration song is talking uh, about uh, that there is nothing that, that can separate us from the love of Christ. Uh, our second ministration song is saying that uh, the sacrifice that the Lord made on the cross, he died for, our, for my sins and for your sins. And so he loved us and so we we should we should be we should be in his house forever we be blessed as we minister
speaker today is Paul Emali, educational background. Paul has a degree in biotechnology from the University of Eldoret. History in ministry. He is a staff at Trinity Fellowship Students Ministry. Family. Paul is married to Florence and together they are blessed with two children, Phoebe and Nathan. Dear congregants, ladies and gentlemen, help me invite Paul Emali as he comes to minister on the topic, The Way of the Cross. I am Paul Emali and I am so glad to stand before us. It is yet to be afternoon, yeah, this morning, to be able to bring us the word of God. Again, an associate of the University of Eldoret Christian Union, I attribute a lot of my growth and uh, encounters with God in this Christian Union, and always it's a privilege to be part of and to, to us. I'm married, and as it's been introduced, we stay here in Junction, and we work among students in the North Rift region. <clears throat> Our topic this morning is the way of the cross. The way of the cross is our topic this morning. And our key text is going to be the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 23. I want us to turn to our Bibles in Luke chapter 9 verse 23. 
And these are the words of Jesus. He's giving us the instructions. He's giving the conditions. He's giving the marks of anyone that is serious about following him. And the Bible says, if anyone desires to come after me, me meaning Jesus, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And Jesus is giving the prerequisite, the conditions that are necessary for everybody that is serious about following him, becoming a Christian, becoming a disciple, a person who can really proclaim Jesus is Lord and Savior of his life. And he said there are some things that are absolute. There are things that you, 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 you need to be very serious about from the very onset. And one is self-denial. And he's saying about taking your cross, not just sometimes, but daily and following him. We know that Jesus Christ tells us in John chapter 10 verse 17 that one of the reasons God loves him is that he as Jesus willingly laid down his life. He had the opportunity not to. It was scary. It was a big thing. It, it had a lot of implications. It had a lot of suffering and pain. Very thought of the cross, we see him sweating blood, but he said he willingly laid down his life. And one of the reasons why God loves him is that he did that so that he can take it up again. And therefore, from the moment he was pro, he, he, he was, the verdict was given for him to be crucified, he took that cross. He carried it all the way to Golgotha. He was nailed on the same cross. He was able to bear, you know, our shame, our pain, our judgment, and the wrath of God was visited upon him on that cross. And he died on that cross. To the very end, he was faithful to fulfill the very purpose that that cross represented. And today he looks at all of us and he says, if there is anyone, if there is any woman that will want to follow me, look at the patterns that I've followed ready to also follow me just as I did. The model that I've set before you, and Jesus is not expecting of us something that he has not done himself. Different churches and different religions verse differently and there are different understandings of what it actually means to walk the way of the cross because Jesus here is inviting us to walk the way of the cross daily as an absolute to discipleship. There are different communities, different actually sects and denominations that have interpreted and they are able to practice many things in the name of the way of the cross differently. For some, the way of the cross is a pilgrimage, or in, in simple English, a journey. And they do this physically. So the church will have this session, they will have this, this moment of just doing the way of the cross, and they have 14 stations. Station 1, Station 2, Mbaka 14, zenye ziko arranged na ziko numbered, and worshippers will actually walk, either individual or in a procession, they move in the order, stopping at each step and associating it with, you know, whatever it signified in, 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 in Jesus Christ. So the first station is when Jesus is condemned to death. The second station is when he carries his cross. The third station, he falls for the first time. And they move on until when Simon, you know, uh, until when, 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 uh, when he helps actually carry the cross all the way to be taken on that cross, to be nailed until he actually dies and is laid in the tomb. All together, it makes up 14 stations. And therefore, utaona washirika wanatembea station moja adi nyingine na wana stop kwa each station could reflect what this meant for the Lord Jesus. So it's a physical procession. For some, the way of the cross is moments of prayers and the session will be held just like we are having a session here. A minister will stand before the church and lead you in the prayers of the way of the cross. And therefore, prayers will be said and the people will recite. It can be projected. It can be written in books. And they have a prayer called the way of the cross. And therefore, you repeat those prayers. Very serious proclamations. You wish those things will practically be really reflected in their lives. They will say things like, I embrace all the tribulations you have destined for me until death. I beg you by the merits of the pain you have suffered in carrying your cross to give me the necessary help to also carry my cross. 
They will pray and say, I will not refuse the cross. I accept it. I embrace it. I accept it. The particular death you have destined for me with all the pains that may accompany it. And people will make such prayers. And you, you, you sometimes wish really that is with understanding because everybody reads. It's, it's, it's congregational. It is chorus prayers. And they will say, give me strength, for sufficient strength to conquer all human respect, all my wicked passions which have led me to despise your friendship, nail my heart to your feet that it may never, it may ever remain there to love you and never leave you again. I love you more than myself. So for some, the way of the cross is prayers. And therefore you do that prayer and you keep doing it, maybe annually, maybe regularly, maybe during some season, like the Easter and they will say they have done the way of the cross. For some, it is physical devotions. So they can do something like a procession, but they will be kneeling down, they will be standing, they will be showing reverence, they will be respecting the cross. And therefore, there are different interpretations as to what Jesus means. Take up your cross and follow me. And they are trying to imitate what Jesus did and, 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 and do that. But we must be convinced Especially not only in this, but in every area of practice as the church of Jesus Christ. That kuna tofauti kubwa sana kati ya believing something and actually practicing it. Doctrine and practice. The fact that you uphold a certain doctrine about Jesus, about the cross, about salvation is different from whether or not you are practicing it. There's a very big difference. In the Bible, faith is something that you do, not something that you know, not something that you sing, not something that you profess. And therefore, there are very many denominations that can proclaim the way of the cross in prayer, in their own devotions. But in the Bible faith, you have not truly believed something until you are able to obey it. The evidence of believing something is that you are able to do. You know you have truly come to know the truth if you obey it. It doesn't matter actually how much facts you know or how you feel about truth. You haven't yet got faith until we can see it practice. The evidence somebody has believed something. And it is true to them. There is conviction. As you will see them living it out in their day-to-day -day life. And therefore walking in the way of the cross for you and me today is not just following the example of Jesus in all life, but as it relates to the cross of Jesus. As it relates to that which he did in bringing us salvation, that which he endured, that which he actually experienced. And one of the questions I want to begin with is asking you personally, individually, why are you following Jesus? Because there are so many reasons as to why we actually follow Jesus. When your intention is always everything. When your motivation even to come to Jesus is wrong, you find it can actually get every other thing wrong in your life. When your motivation and intention to come to Jesus is also right, that also affects your response and walk with him. In the Bible, the many people that followed Jesus, including even his disciples, some of them came with the assumption that Jesus was going to become someone very successful. He was going somewhere very successful. And many followed him with the desire that we jamaki rise na take your position in ataka ni kue hapo. Niweze kukulia, niweze pia kuenjoy power, kuenjoy privileges that are coming with him. It amazes us that even some of his disciples reached a point of going to engage their parents to come and negotiate on their behalf before Jesus so that they can be able to actually get, you know, a portion. Just in case we jamaat achukwe your power or to onge mapema ndiyo mimi ni kweni me cut deal. The way politicians do. We campaign for you and we go around the country lakini ukichukua power, mimi ni kwe prime minister, mimi ni kwe minister, ni kwe CS. In Matthew 20, verse 20, we see one of those incidences in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, that is actually recorded in the Bible. And the Bible says in Matthew 20, verse 20 to 22, Then the mother of Zebedee's son came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down and asked a favor of him. What is it that you want? Jesus asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right hand and the other one at your left in your kingdom. Yesu wali muangalia... You do not know what you are asking for. <laughs> Jesus said to them, Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? You know, they were asking a share of where Jesus was going. And Jesus said, Mother, do you know what you are truly asking of me? And imagine, Alijibu akasema, Yes, Ninajua. Yes, we can. And they were actually saying, We will drink that. But Jesus was referring 
to that which he understood he is going to share in that which he understood is going to actually go but inakwambia hata watu wenye walikuwa wanafuata Yesu their expectations and you can actually follow Jesus and some it's it's true there are many people that come to faith because the message they have heard the gospel is come to Jesus your problems will be over come to Jesus you will have this and that life come to Jesus and this one and this one will be possible for you and therefore your primary intention to come to Jesus is there is something that you want to really accomplish and pursue in this life and Jesus becomes a means to an end so that Jesus was rising in popularity he was growing in influence and they were so sure that as much as we just keep following him wherever we, he goes we will have a share in this they only saw this popularity they only saw the influence but they never knew that he was going to the cross to actually die they saw the success and didn't see the suffering and even today if you are following Jesus is because of some blessing is because of some gift is because of some privilege that you want you you are you know you are wrongly placed and it will be very difficult for you to persevere and hold on in the faith to the very end no wonder not many people that start the journey of faith actually hold on to the very end it's not all it is not all some it is because they are ideas of christianity simply get actually disappointed at the very beginning because it is a wrong gospel they received and when the reality hits that is not the gospel they responded to some it is because there's difficulty that comes their way some it's because it will demand of significant radical changes in their lives and they are not ready to make up that commitment and therefore there are some that will actually shrink back following jesus may cost you everything even your own life and that is a gospel you don't hear many a times today in the bible many of the disciples that followed jesus especially those that were following jesus for their own selfish reasons they began leaving him one after another when jesus began demanding for their sacrifice when he began demanding for their commitment when he began expecting them to live up to the standards of discipleship we see in john chapter 6 verse 66 that when the teachings of Jesus became hard when the standards of the kingdom of God were clear to them that you can't live like the world and say you are Christian you can't hold on to this and still follow me when he began expecting of them to leave the world to stop this radical commitment above all else the bible says from this time many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him lifika wakati mpaka wakamtoka and even Jesus turned to his 12 disciples and asked them and you also will you follow these others and peter turns to jesus in verse 68 and he answered him lord whom shall we go to you alone have the words of eternal life and you see in peter a man who even when it is tough it is difficult he understand this one thing in jesus i have something better than riches in jesus i have something better than wealth in jesus i have something better than there is a need for balance today in church especially in your christian life to know that the same god that has promised to bless you to prosper you to give you you know all the big and good things is the same god that also will give you and 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 through faith in him allow you go through some opportunities that will cause suffering pain rejection and your faith can cost you even those and it is important for us to be balanced in our theology that we do not count it strange that i'm born again i love jesus yet kuna vitu haziniendei mzuri yet kuna mali nina safa yet kuna njia hii na hii haitendeki yet nimetama for a long time sijapata job there is a need for balance to understand that the call to follow jesus is not an a call for 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 you know especially today a lot of damage has been done to a lot of people's beliefs with the prosperity gospel because the three foundations are prosperity gospel ni come to jesus and you will be rich come to jesus and you will be healthy you will not be sick you will overcome every sickness and come to jesus and you will be free from pain and suffering 
Those are their three. And they make you feel there is everything wrong with you if you are not rich and you are born again. If you have financial constraints. They make you feel like you must pay more. So that you can open your doors. There is something wrong with you if you are born again or con sicknesses. You know, there is a curse. There is this. There is this. And all their theology leads you to give them something so that they can speak into your life. That you can't be born again and suffer. And therefore, when a believer encounters suffering, in a kuwa ni challenging sasa kuna navigate, especially your relationship with God in those tough times. So there is need for balance for us to understand that we cannot afford to read our Bibles with one eye and choose some parts of the Bible to believe and follow and some to reject and not believe in. Yet it's the same word of God. So we need a balance. We are living in a time where we are slowly dethroning Jesus and becoming lords of our lives. And a lot of emphasis in the church today, if we are not careful, is all about us. Us. 70% of songs that we sing are about what God should do for us. And not what we are actually required to do for him. It is about my miracle. It's about my blessing. It's about my next level. Aki kuna shida kabisa ukiona si yu inaimba everything na double double. Na double double. My God is good though. Kwa sababu vitu zina zina double double. Kuna shida kabisa umefika campus with all your knowledge na unakuja hapo unasema nitaenda ngambo wa shangae. Nitaenda na tunazunguka tukisema nitaenda ngambo wa shangae. You know so what? So you, you, you look at the songs. It's all about me. What God should do for me. What God should, you know. And, and there needs to be a balance. That also what God requires of us should also be verbalized. And there should be more of also that. So that we are not growing to be selfish believers that are all about us. Our prayers, 90% of a lot of our prayers are about what God should do for us. And not about his mission to the world. Because how many prayers have you made, really? And be serious about pursuing, about the mission of God in the world. The salvation of the lost. The change in morality. Good govern. You know, things that you want to see done in the world that God actually has promised. And you are pursuing that on your knees. With the passion, the same way you will pray for your blessings. And the same way you will pray for other things. In the Bible, the way of the cross that we are talking about represents this, the following things. Number one, the cross in the Bible represents suffering. It represents suffering. That the path of following Jesus is a path that will be marked by evident suffering. That one of the things we should not shrink away from, one of the things we should not count strange, especially for the sake of the name of Jesus, is if our faith in Jesus brings us suffering. Atujaitwa kama wa Kristo kwenda kutafuta suffering ya kwamba unaona kwamba wewe sio mkristo serious kwa sababu you are not suffering so enda tafuta suffering ujitume mali utateseka that's not what the bible says but the bible says in your course of following Jesus in your faith in Jesus if that brings you to suffer if the fact that you have chosen not to deny Jesus not to compromise in the workplace in your studies in your engagements you have chosen to remain straight and true to the bible if that brings suffering don't count it strange. Don't count God has neglected you. You should embrace it. The cross and the way of the cross represents a path of suffering. In Isaiah 53 verse 4, we see the Bible says, Surely he has borne our griefs, Isaiah 53 4, and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten, afflicted by God. He was smitten. He was stricken. He was afflicted. He suffered on that cross. He knew that is what he was heading for. He willingly faced that for you and me. And he says, if you want to follow me, be also ready to carry your own cross and follow me. Following Jesus can mean suffering for him. And you can suffer in this life just because you have chosen to uphold the biblical standard. It's not strange. Biblically, you should even rejoice that you have the privilege to suffer for Jesus. There's a prayer meeting that people are praying because of some believers that have been jailed. They were in prison. At God, please release them. And one woman rose and said, Oh Lord, oh, why have you given them such a privilege to suffer for you? Unajua mpaka unataka ufungue macho wangalio mmade kama ni sawa na omba ama ni in. Oh Lord, you have given them such a privilege to suffer for you. 
you know you read the book of acts na juza ni nini kweli ilikuwa inafanya wa apostles wanatandikwa na wanatumwa nje na wanaenda wana rejoice because wamepata opportunity to suffer for Jesus we you know when we don't understand the way of the cross we count those things as abnormal we can't suffer for Jesus number two, the cross represents shame shame utadharauliwa utaitwa majina because you are a christian because you will not follow the cultures of this world because you will deny the traditions of your fathers and of your forefathers there are things you will not pursue and submit yourself to some are demonic some are worldly there are clothing you will not put on there are ways of approaching relationships you will not follow there are things you will not watch there are music you will not listen to in this world when you choose to be different kwa sababu unajua godliness will always condemn those who are ungodly kitu yenye watu wenye wanatembea kwa dhambi hawataki ni kuona mtu mwenye anaoonyesha what they are not and when you consistently live a christian life before them it condemns them it shows them a peace they don't have it shows them moral standards they are not upholding that condemns them so watakurusha majina watakuridicule watakumock with the hope ya kukushusha chini ujidefy ukwe kama hao so that there is nothing around them that keeps condemning them it is a place of shame the bible tells us in hebrews 12 verse 2 that looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith hebrews 12:2 who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of god Yaani kitu yenye ilifanya Yesu avumilie hiyo pain, hiyo shame ni aliona kenye kikoset before him. Aliona salvation to the whole world. Aliona you and I coming to faith in Jesus Christ that we will not perish but having eternal life. He endured the cross because of what was set before him. You must have something about your faith that is set before you. The eternity, the the the, the relationship with God, the the things that you actually lose when you deny and walk away from your faith that helps you even when you suffer, even when you are mocked, even when you are ridiculed, you you can set your eyes not on the temporal and the and na yenye inapita. You know a lot of these sufferings are for a season. Zitaisha but usipokuwa careful zinaweza kukufinya zinaweza kukuondoa kwa imani zinaweza kill passion zinaweza kill commitment but he focused himself on that which is coming you look more don't not just now not just this pains not just this temporal discomforts but at what was set before me he endured he had something bigger yenye the present experience haikukuwa mbaya ashamed of Jesus. Don't feel ashamed of continuing to really uphold that which you know to be true just because it is bringing you ridicule, just because it is bringing you mockery. You should actually rejoice. You should be proud to be known to be a believer. Don't be ashamed to pronounce your faith everywhere you go. Number three, the cross represents reproach and rejection. Reproach and rejection. Reproach and rejection. And in Isaiah 53:4 the Bible says the chastisement of for our peace was upon him he was chastised he was reproached utawekelewa hata vitu zenye sio ukweli utatengwa there are doors that will be shut to your face because you are a believer there are things you will not be allowed to be part of there are deals you will not be allowed to participate in there are opportunities you will know you cannot engage in there are ways others can make money you you will not make money that way there are ways others can get jobs you you cannot get jobs that way there are things that people will do in this world you will choose not to do you will be rejected you will be called a spoiler because you uphold faith because you actually live up to the ideals of scripture and lastly the cross represents self denial self denial dying to self dying to ourselves self denial dying to ourselves self denial Yesu alijinyima alijipeana hata maisha yake He underwent all this willingly So it is giving up our wishes when those wishes are not in line with the will of God and doing so gladly giving up our dreams and ambitions if Jesus will want us to live our life in a different way 
You can have all your life planned out, but God's will for your life may be different. It is embracing the clear, especially when you are clear about the will of God for your life. Laying down my life, laying down my ideas, laying down my knowledge, laying down my feelings, as much as God has revealed his clear way, I will follow him. I will follow him. The Bible says he died so that those who live will no longer live for themselves, but live for the one who died for them. This life we live not just for our own you know, ways, but we live. The best life you can ever live is a life that is lived in the will of God for you and seeking to know that and pursue that. And I want to just speak into some practical applications for us, even as we talk about the way of the cross. And I just want to speak of three, two, th three areas where we need to really be serious and engage, especially in this season of decision-making and the season of building a foundation for our Christian life that informs the rest of our life. And number one, I want to speak about giving up the things of the world, giving up the things of this world. If there is one way, if there is one area where as a church we need to still emphasize again and again, part of our following Jesus is the readiness to be able to distance ourselves, the readiness to be able to give up, to be different from the world by we ourselves first dying to the things that are actually denying us the victory that we need to have in Jesus. There's a problem when you're a believer and you find it difficult to just live and give up secular music, to walk out of ungodly relationships. You are born again, but it is very difficult for you to say no to betting and gambling. You are born again, but you can still go to revs. You can still go to these places and say, Bora Sikunyu, that you can, you can entertain things that you know are not godly in the lives of others and continue to engage with them as long as you see your way unafanya. Unajua anything you can be able to entertain in somebody else as long as you tolerate it. It's just a matter of time. If you have no problem with it in the life of another person, then within no time, that is the doorway for you to actually find acceptance and be able to adopt it. And you will have no problem. You will find more justification to practice it. Kama sahi unangangana tu kuachana na mwanaume mwenye relationship and it is the leading cause of immorality in your life unasema tumekuwa pamoja 3 years nitamuhata tafila aje tume invest sana you find eh nitamuhat it is it is it you are not ready you are not ready you you will not last in this faith you will not last you will not you are not ready to follow jesus yes wanasema ka chini reflect are you ready to follow me Deny, die to self. Die to self ni kwamba yes kuna vitu nina feel, kuna vitu nime nime nimekuwa entertained nazo nimezipenda na nimekuwa nimegrona. But Jesus says now no. And Jesus is saying choose whether you want to hurt me or hurt him. And we have choices and it's a problem when you choose to sometimes sacrifice your faith for the sake of something else. Anything that is sinful that God exposes in your life that you are not willing to give up is the one thing that will ensure you are not continuing in the faith. You cannot continue in the faith if you are not ready. I make sense kabisa kwa hiyo kusema I am coming to Jesus to be saved from my sins yet you do not want to let go of those sins. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. The gospel of Jesus is power enough to deliver us from every kind of thing that he has actually finished on that cross. If we truly believe in him, if we truly make up our minds about lifestyles, values, cultures that are against him, and he invites us, come, come. And the first call is repent, walk out of these things so that you can experience me. How can the church experience him and how can we be able to even die to other things? Come to these small choices, Zinanishinda. Kama tu movie, football, game, inezafanya ukose church. Hai, commitment yako kwa yesu ni kidogo sana. It's too weak. It's too weak. Actually, if your passions can be satisfied with just movies and football more than with Jesus, your passions are very weak. If it just takes movies to satisfy you more than Jesus, you have very weak passions. And your following is, is in danger. There must be a relationship with Jesus where I do not question. I, my, my, my loyalty to Jesus, nothing can really come. No man, nothing, no influence of this world can be able to actually stop me from responding to him. Na inafai kwe, 
For many of us, it is because of social media obsession with movies and many things that we can no longer even have a healthy communion with our God. That even our healthy relationship with God is gone. Na kuna vitu mingi. We are passionate about many other things. Church, we cannot be ready to die for Jesus and change this world if we are not able to die to these small things. Your phone, putting it aside so that you can pray, so that you can be able to read your Bible daily. This is just small things. Hmm? If we are not close to Jesus, if we are not infused with his passion, if we are not intimate with Jesus, we will never have the strength to do what he needs us to do in this world. Kama hauna intimate relationship with God, all the other things about really walking in the way of cross cannot be realized. You do not have the foundation, you do not have the stamina, you do not have the convictions that can hold, uphold you. No wonder when it is difficult, when life changes actually come, they crush you. Because faith will be tested. The Bible says so that it can be known for what it is. And these testings, these trials, these difficult moments, they can only refine your faith so that it can be shown to actually be pure like gold. But if it is not built on stone, if it is not built on the firm foundation, which is Jesus, the fall will be great. You can start well. Starting is not the problem. Are you ready? Are you counting the cost? Are you able to, to go to the very end? Because it is not starting. It is finishing. That is the big issue. So we must start first by dying to the world, dying to the things that are around us that make us not to be intimate with Jesus so that we can hold on to Jesus in a fresh way. So number one is dying. Are there things in your life as a believer, as a son of God, as a daughter of God, Sahi, by the leading of the Spirit, by his impressions in your life. Sometimes he brings the voices of people to speak to you. Sometimes even you yourself, you see how it is leading you to a lot of condemnation. You cannot freely worship your God. You, cannot, you do not have even the joy of salvation because there are these patterns of life you keep going back to. And the first step is really, have you made up your mind about following Jesus? Have you made up your mind to follow him? The only reason why a born-again Christian sometimes cannot overcome sin is because they still love it. They still want it. Is your mind made up about following Jesus? Because about the real call of God, in a build conviction, ataka una struggle, una struggle direction yako ni kwa Yesu, unataka kutoka, you are willing to even look for help, speak to somebody, pursue every means that can help you to see freedom. But you can't be comfortable. You can't be comfortable with a lifestyle, with the decisions and values and relationships and engagements that are denying you following Jesus. So number one is dying to the things of the world. That in the, in the, it involves decisions. Number two is in the area of responding to God's call. The area of responding to God's call. The area of responding to God's call. <clears throat> it's another area when you talk about the way of the cross. I am Speaking on this because it's a very crucial area. Every one of us seated here without exception. There is a ministry, there is a purpose that God created you for. There is not a single believer, biblically, if you interpret your Bible well, that is meant to just exist to fill space. If you have been born again, if you are in Jesus Christ, there are good works. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, I believe it's verse 10 or Hapochini, that all of us have been born again, created, made anew in Jesus Christ so that we can be able to fulfill the good works that God ordained even before the foundations of this earth were laid. You have a purpose, you have a mission, you are an instrument in the hands of God through whom he seeks to change the world, through whom he seeks to spread the gospel, through whom he seeks. So there are many ministries represented here. There are many passions. There are many gifts of God here. There are many directions that God will want to scatter our lives and use us for his glory. The challenging thing and the saddening thing is that 80% of young people that are called by God, they have known the clear call of God on their lives. They are passionate about it. 80% will shortchange the call of God in their life. They will never continue to pursue the call of God in their life because of the issues of this world, because of the love for money. Because of the idea that God cannot give me the lifestyle that I want. Because of the idea that God cannot fulfill my desires. Because of comparing ourselves to our peers. Because of the human expectations and the standards that this world have created about greatness and success. So, very few, 
Very few. You look at the call of Jesus to his disciples in Matthew 4.19. He comes and he says, come, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. And you are able to see in verse 20, at once, the Bible says at once, they did not debate, they did not ask questions, they did not want all the details. They knew it is God who is calling us. At once, they had seen the Savior. They had seen him teach. They had seen the things they did. They knew this is God. Na kuna place unafika unajua clearly this is God speaking to me. It's evident. There is no doubt about it. At once they left their nets and followed him. And followed him. <clears throat> it was instant. And I want to really say the call of God upon our lives is disruptive. A lot of times it is very disruptive. You haven't really responded to the call of God until you have a choice not to respond, until you have an alternative. You have something else to do with your life. You have your plans, your ambitions set out, and they are clearly. And that is when you really know if you can truly respond to the call of God. And the tragedy today is that very few of us are willing to follow Jesus anywhere he calls us to go. We are ready to follow him, but in some places, in some circumstances. It is true that as we are seated here, there are many of us that God will still use in our careers, in our platforms, in the places he has positioned us. But every single believer, regardless of the call and the ministry that God has placed upon you, there must be a readiness, a readiness to say, here I am, send me. That I am willing to go anywhere you want me to go, to live any kind of life you want me to live, to do any kind of thing you want me to do, that will bring you the highest glory. One of the best prayers you can make is really that. Lord, any kind of life, any kind of life that will bring you the highest glory, help me live that life. And it's different for each one of us. It's different for each one of us. The challenge with the call of God is that he sees what he is calling us into, but we ourselves don't see it clearly. Yani kungekuwa na machine na kungekuwa na some invention yenyewe za tubeba wote ikurushe 20 years ahead kuache tu relax huko one month na ikurudishe all of us you will still choose God's will for your life sometimes it's because we don't know the details the outcome the patterns what will happen sometimes you know God can show you the end and not the process he can show you the next step and not the others you know for Joseph it was just him you know people bowing at him he didn't see the process jamani ndio huyo amekuwa slave ndio huyo prison you know you can't believe this is god but still he was able to fulfill it for the israelites it was a land full of honey and you know the, the promised land but the process so sometimes ni kwa sababu atuoni atuoni lakini if if you actually given time, given upelekwe tu uishi uko na urudishwe, you will still choose the will of God. We resist it because we don't have all the details. But he does. God is not after wrecking any life. God is not after kukukazia na kuku, you know, he's your father, he's your creator. Nobody can best lead and guide your life than him. And sometimes we think we are best placed to actually guide our lives and take care of our lives. Nobody can take care of you more than your father. And he's able to do that. He has proven that in history again and again. So we only see our ambitions. We only see our well thought and organized life plans. We keep comparing ourselves to others. We keep going back again and again to what we see. He takes us here, we keep going back to what we are comfortable with. Yet he is calling us to what he wants us to be. The call of God can be disruptive. You know the thing that is stunning about the call of Jesus is that he will call you away from what is legitimate, from what everybody expects you to do, including your parents and relatives and friends. Our parents are glad we are born again, we go to church because we are good people. You don't drink, you don't smoke, you are not immoral, you are not married by now, you are not pregnant. Yeah, thank God church has helped you and faith has helped you, you've navigated. Actually the difficult ages in any human life ni your teenage kwanza. Hmm? Hata wazazi wanashangaa ni mtoto wangu kweli. Na without Mungu hapo watoto wengi wanakufa sana. Na amefukuru Mungu wewe umekuwa too peaceful umepita hizo nini zote. So for, for them they love faith because it helps you become a good person. But unfortunately for some wanakwambia usiingie kwa mambo ya Mungu sana, usiingie sana, penda Mungu lakini sio sana, usiingie sana, una una hmm? Kenda mission moja unasema tena unaenda nyingine hapana hapana. Umeenda ka training tena unasema ah hii mambo ya kanisa enda tu kama wengine enda tu Sunday and they will speak that 
And sometimes it is until God has called you and you are very clear and you go to your parents and you say, God has called me to the nations, they will realize, apana hao alikuwa nataka niokoke lakini nisingie kwa Mungu zaidi. And I don't blame many of them because some of them really come with a background that they they want to be proud with their children ume, and some mtoto wangu ako huko anafanya hii mtoto wangu ako huko wanasema hii mambo ya mtoto wangu ni missionary hiyo ah hiyo hapana hiyo inakaja sasa mtoto wangu ako huko ati ana ana run ministry fulani ah hapana and and therefore even right from our own parents so pressure inatokeanga from from everywhere and One of the things that is greatly shortchanged among many passionate believers that are growing to know God and love him and experience him is the call of God. Some even marriage skills. Skills. Kwa sababu kama uko na vision ya great commission, standards zako za life inakuwa ni so many pate job, ni jenge nyumba, ni pate watoto na ukisha accomplish hiyo vision yako inaishia hapo. There is nothing else about your life because you have reached there is nothing else. Pata watu wanaanza kutafuta mpango ya kando bibi ya pili kwa sababu ana vision nyingine. Ana vision nyingine kwa maisha amefika. So you it's, it's very important. It's very important. Jesus, ne, Jesus never calls you away from bad things. When he says go into the world he means he may call you from your career. To go means he may call you from your comfort. Abraham was called from his comfortable and settled life. And this man responded to God he had to live in tents for the rest of his life a very rich man of his time he had settled lived a very comfortable life that is what responding to God meant to Abraham Paul was among the most learned scholars of his time he had to leave the law and move to become a preacher of the gospel through whom God has used to influence and impact our theology Luke was a doctor a very prestigious job and the bible goes on and on and on Elisha a very successful farmer He actually calls you away from important things to come and do what he has ordained from eternity past for you to do. At the end of the day we are only going to be truly free if we follow Jesus not sometimes even knowing where we will lay our heads. If God chooses to bless you with riches it is all good but I will still tell us that following Jesus does not mean we will be successful by the standards of this world. It does not mean we will be famous. It does not mean we will be remembered. It does not mean that we will be rich or admired or everybody will actually embrace that which you are doing. And thirdly is in the place of persecution and suffering because of your faith. The third area even as I finish in the place of persecution and suffering because of your faith. Following Jesus meant trouble for all the apostles. Everywhere this gospel has been preached and disciples have been made there has been trouble. If we are going to follow Jesus we must be willing to follow him even if it will bring persecution. We thank God in Kenya we have freedom of worship, we have the privilege we can pray, we can pronounce God, proclaim him. We thank God. We don't know how long this window will last. But let's use it. There are countries in there are, there are countries in this world where you cannot even stand and talk the Bible. A teacher cannot even put any any Christian thing on his clothing. Cannot even engage a student one on one. You lose your job. There are places you will be imprisoned just because you have spoken against what they call rights that are against the Bible, gay rights. And you You find the world is changing. What you see in the US in the next 20 years will be here. And the Christian faith is going to be one of the most persecuted faith because we do not have relative truth. We have absolute truth. It is not where amini yako na bora uko honest fuata na amini amini yangu na bora niko honest. Our our proclamation is this is the truth. Everything outside this is a lie. We do not condone it. We do not we do not have a relative faith. And that is what makes other religions hate the Christian faith because others will be comfortable with all forms the hindus will have even a million or a thousand gods for everything and you choose what you want you embrace any lifestyle but this is absolute the word of god and the bible says in philippians 1:29 for unto you it is given on behalf of christ philippians 1:29 not only to believe in him but also to suffer for his sake but also to suffer for his sake 
I share the story of one young man. The father was the advisor to the Sudan's president, al-Bashir. This young man came to believe in Jesus. He was a Muslim, got the gospel, believed in Jesus. When he broke his news to the family, they were very angry. They were upset. In fact, they actually told him, you are dead to us. They held a funeral, bought a coffin, buried that coffin, and set up a gravestone. They counted him dead. Now come Sahau Kabisa. They refused to have any interaction with him, communication with him at all, because in their view, he became dead. This young man is called Yesa. He is a fearless believer in Jesus, even today. He tells the story of walking to his very own grave and reading his own tombstone and dealing with the reality that for him to follow Jesus, the decision he has made to continue to pursue the Christian faith, it means a lifetime of trouble, including being dead to the family that he had loved, that had educated him, that had nourished him, that had cherished him, and had brought him into this world. Yet he still continued in the faith, even if the parents count him dead as long as he remains a Christian. It was easy. Just renounce your faith and belong to your family. And that's where you learn that sometimes it is either Jesus or family. It's either Jesus or job. It's either Jesus or that person or that opportunity. Following Jesus may mean a lot of things to us. Everyone here may be enjoying the walk with Jesus through the green pastures besides the still waters. But how many of us have been in the valley of the shadow of death? Because you have not truly known Jesus as a shepherd until you walk even in the valley of the shadow of death. Our relationship with Jesus should not be a relationship that is only thriving and joyful only when things are good. In this world, you can go through troubles. Home may not be well. Financially, you may not be doing well. There are many... Yani, you know, first we must begin with anchoring our faith on the reality that in this world, whether I am rich or poor, in this world, whether I am sick or you know, in good health, whether I'm going through pain and suffering or my life is free of those, that the fact that I have Jesus, the fact that I have eternal life, number one, that is a very precious thing and a very foundation to our faith. That our God does not relate with us based on our financial standing, based on our, you know, but based on our faith in Jesus Christ. And yes, you can be going through tough moments. Yes, you can be going through difficulties. Yes, life may not really be fair to you. And sometimes if you are not having a great understanding of your God and knowing him. The way Job alifunuliwa na mungu. This man lost his entire family, his entire wealth, and he debated. He even questioned God in many ways until God came and revealed to him, comforted him, and showed him what he was working. And he says, now I know. Sometimes hata maneno ya watu wewezi kukusaidia. Sometimes it is wewe. To say that no matter what, I will hold on to God. I will pray. I will kubali, the comfort of other believers to come and support me even through the difficult moments. But one thing that I will not give up is my passion for Jesus, my seeking for him. So that even you see how he works out his purposes. Sometimes the devil means some things for bad, for your, for your destruction. But God will still work out many of these things for our good. And you look back and you find reasons to praise him because you never gave up. Because you never, you know, resigned from your faith. Our friendship with Jesus, our following Jesus is both in good times and in bad. Somebody sang that the God of the valleys is, is, is in the mountains is also the Lord in the valleys. In the storm is still, in, even when things go wrong, he will make a way. As long as our faith is in him, our faith is in him. That we can hold on to still his promise, his loving. He can hold on to his promise. Even sometimes when we have relatives that die and your desire was for God to heal, you have prayed, you have fasted, that he's still a healer, and you can still stand and call God a healer. Some of those pronouncements are not easy, but it is because your faith is truly in him and how he has revealed himself to us. We do not his way, know his ways. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, but we know in his, in his attributes, the way God has revealed himself to us, he's a just God. He's a loving God. He's a gracious God. He means no harm. He means nothing for evil. And there are things that we may not even understand in this world, yet we face. But we can have a lot of that understanding later on actually in life, in, in eternity when we are there with him. So the bigger body of Jesus Christ, a lot of believers are actually dying for Jesus. Sometimes when we are short-sighted, you may think you are the one who is going through worst. But there are people that are even dying, dying daily for Jesus. And they have not denied him. 
the history of the church, the blood of martyrs that has been the seed for the growth of the church is people who even with their lives, they never denied Jesus. And sometimes when we lack that history, we lack that understanding, we feel our life is over. We feel we are in the darkest of all times. And you see how God has worked. Close to a quarter a million Christians died just last year because of Jesus in Indonesia, Pakistan, South Sudan, and Nigeria. And the only thing they said is they will not deny Jesus. Whether you will choose to either deny Jesus or die. Because those are some of the things that will mark the end times. Thousands of Christians are being faced with that decision every single day. Every single day. Every single day. It's not a privilege that we are not there. But the Bible says even when it is demanded of us to suffer for him, it should not be counted as strange. It should not be counted as strange. That the strong, the stable believers whose foundation will last every time and season that is yet to come are those whose theology is balanced. That we will expect blessings from God. There is nothing wrong with God prospering us. The Bible says so. There is nothing wrong with God making us successful, God making us rich. He has promised in his word. But when I take an extreme position where my faith is balanced on only prosperity, success, and I do not see that the same God can lead you to the paths of suffering for his sake. To some forms of living that will glorify his name. And many things that he can actually allow. So that I do not, I do not count that strange because it's happening to me. I want us to rise on our feet even as we... So we respond. And the word of God as it comes to us even this morning, we are being reminded that our response, we have truly believed the word of God when we are ready to practice it. There is no other better evidence for faith than practice, obedience. Is there an area that he's truly calling you to work on? Because that is what matters. That's what matters. Do you love your phone more than you love your Bible? Do you love other passions of this world more than you love Jesus? He's calling you to, to mortify, to die to the deeds of this flesh. There's nothing wrong with football. There's nothing wrong with social media. But there is a way that sometimes these things become idols in our lives that when we are meant to choose between Jesus and them, we'll choose them. That some of us, God is calling us to the place of repentance. I have loved the things of this world more than I have loved you. Help me to, 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 to prioritize, to discipline myself and put myself right. For some of us, we have held on to things of this world and God is speaking to us, giving us numerous opportunities to repent and turn away from them. Do not continue to postpone the promptings and leading of God in your life. Some of these things will take you away from this faith if you are not serious. If you are not serious. And he says you are not ready to follow me. If there is anything in your life you cannot give up, that I say give up. And some of you is responding to him. So I want to walk out of this ungodly relationship. I want to renew my love for Jesus. I want to stop this secularism, these lifestyles, these dressing patterns, this place I'm frequenting. For some of us is the willingness and just commitment to voice our commitment before God. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you take me, I will go. Because you are my Lord, I believe in you. For some of us, is God give me strength, comfort. Yes, shetani sengina niletanga ma voices. Kwa sabu ni napitia difficult issues. Sengine yata ananiambia wachana na church. Sengine ni nafeel mungu wa menionea. Sengine nafeel. But God, today you can still say, I love you no matter what. You are my God. Can you just lift up your hands and say something to God in response to even that which is speaking to us today. In response to his word that is coming to you this morning. That you can be able to proclaim before him, I will follow you. Where you lead, I will go. What you ask of me, I will do. What you demand of me, I will respond, oh God. I pray that you help me to carry my cross, to bear the, the persecution, to bear the suffering, to bear the rejection, to bear the shame.
to hold on firmly even when there is suffering in this world you have overcome everything oh jesus and in you i have life in you i have purpose in you almighty father i have come to indeed know myself i pray that you guide and lead each of us lord to experiencing life the way you will want us to experience it oh father open us to see your ways open us to understand your ways just like you revealed your ways to moses may you reveal your ways to us that we can see beyond the now that we can see beyond the experiences of now set our eyes on that which is eternal set our eyes on that which is unchanging that even when we are going through difficulties we will endure the difficulties we will endure the shame we will endure the troubles of this world because our eyes are set on that which is unchanging because our eyes are set on that which is eternal focus our eyes focus our eyes on that which is eternal in the name of Jesus that we will not be short sighted that we will not be preoccupied by that which is temporal but by that which is eternal to your glory and honor almighty father in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus our father we thank you for the word that you're bringing us even this day speaking to us that as your church you are reminding us on the cost of following Jesus help us not to shrink back in the face of persecution in the face of suffering in the face where this world will reject us this world will reproach and and, and ridicule us because of our faith in you that we will hold firmly to the truth that we will remain solid to that which you have called us to oh god give us the boldness and confidence to be able lord to even respond to you in obedience no matter the cost that we will have to pay oh god i pray lord even in the changing times that we are living in you will help us to uphold godly values you will help us to be careful about taking care of our spiritual foundations you will help us to guard our thoughts to guard our hearts that we will not be bitter we will not be angry we will not be discouraged by your spirit give us strength Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Paul. May God bless you. Let's appreciate him once more. Yeah, thank you for coming for today's um, second service. I invite us all to our Friday fellowship. We will, he has mentioned something to do with gambling and betting. When you tulikuwa mara, when you your wild coin betting site, ukiekelea maniu kicho ikicheza na fulam. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so let's come let's on Friday and um, we we be taught about these things. Hallelujah. Yeah, we can be on our feet as we share the words of grace. Them that are sitting, yeah. Let's share and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. May God bless you. Purpose to attend all classes in this. Place. Oh!